All right, let's go. This time, look at that. It's working. Uh, if you uh, joined us on our false take, thank you. If you're back on our second take, thank you. Welcome to Flames Nation Live on a Sunday. Let's go. Happy Sunday. Hope you're doing well. And that's a good start to the season for the Calgary Flames, hey? Um, yeah, I think you'll take that 2-0 and start. I think you'll take wins over the Avalanche and the Edmonton Oilers. So welcome to it. We've got Josh, we've got J-Dub, we've got Sasha with us. I do have to give J-Dub credit. He was the first one through on the false take where my audio wasn't working. You, th- you miss one step, and uh, then all of a sudden you look like a dummy. Um, okay, Flames Nation Live's underway. My name is Pat Steinberg from the home studio, from Flames Talk on Sportsnet 960, The Fan. Uh, let's do this. Let's tell you that Flames Nation Live's brought to you by DoorDash, as always. Um, go download the app, create the account, use the promo code. Been telling you about the promo code. You know it. It's FN Live DD. Use that. Get 25% off your first order and free delivery. Once again, that promo code is FN Live DD. So, as we mentioned, pretty good start to the season for the Calgary Flames, right? Like, I think you'll take this. How about 2 and 0 for the first time since 2009-2010? Now, that that could be slightly ominous because in 2009-2010, um they missed the playoffs. They went 4-0 and in 0-9-0-10 and then missed the playoffs. But I think this team has a little bit of a different vibe to it. And I don't know. I, I, I like a lot of what I've seen from the Flames through the first two games of the season. Not perfect, obviously. Not, uh, not without room for improvement. Not without some areas that could definitely be improved upon. But... I think you got to like a lot of what you've seen so far. I'm curious what you think to this point on the comments. And uh, if you're on the live chat, love to have you with us. If you are watching live here on Flames Nation Live, here's, and, and as the comments start to come in, here's kind of what I have liked about the first two games. You take a look, courtesy Natural Statric right there. You take a look what they've been able to do. It has not been perfect. The top of the first game is Colorado. The second game is Edmonton. Or top's Colorado, bottom is Edmonton. They, at 5-on-5, five five, they have had the high-danger scoring chance edge, the scoring chance edge, and the possession edge against two really good offensive teams. And while it hasn't been perfect, and while the scores have been maybe a little bit higher than Daryl Sutter would have liked them or whatever the case may be, they've done a pretty good job of limiting some really good offensive teams, especially at five on five. Okay, Nathan McKinnon certainly had his moments on Thursday. There's no doubt about that. But the Flames did an excellent job against McDavid and Drysaddle. Even when Jay Woodcroft put them together on a line, the Flames did an excellent job against McDavid and Drysaddle in game two of the season and in round one of the Battle of Alberta. The power play that got theirs and... You know, there were definitely dangerous moments for both guys, even at five on five. That's going to happen whenever they play. But I thought that the Anderson pairing, Anderson Hannafin did a great job against those two. And I thought whatever forward line was out there, whether it was the Lindholm line or whether it was the Backlund line, I thought they did a really good job against McDavid and company. So that's and 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 for the most part I think they did a pretty good job against McKinnon especially in the first half of that hockey game on Thursday so I, I guess for me I, I think that I look at it and, and I see far more positives than negatives to start the season for the flames again not everything is perfect and not everything has gone exactly according to plan but I think that uh, I, I think that you have to you have to be pretty impressed with the first two games of the season for Calgary, especially because they never start the season with a win, and especially because of the opposition. I mean, that's two really good opponents they've gone up against to start the year. So let's jump in on the live chat uh, once again. Sasha was in first. J Dub, Josh, uh, Susan is with us as well. Susan says sure was a good start. Uh, Daniel says way better than expected for sure. Here's one from Peter. Uh, Peter says the first line needs to start clicking. That is a thought. And, you know, I understand why there has been some, I don't even know if the word criticism would be the right word. Look, the Kadri line's been great. The Backlund line's been reliable. I don't know. I don't know if you could really script a better two games for the Rooney, Lucic, Richie, Richie line. They've been really strong. But the one line that has been maybe a little underwhelming has been the Lindholm line with Toffoli and Jonathan Huberdo. And I'm okay with that. I'm not worried about that. I think it's going to figure itself out here as time goes along. I really do. I just think there is so much reason 
to give those three guys a lot of time together and let them really start to build some chemistry. And and as Wes Gilbertson of Post Media pointed out on Friday's edition of Flames Talk, you know, Manjapani and Dubé have played together before on one line. And obviously, Backlund and Coleman are very familiar with one another on another line. And Lucic and Richie have some familiarity with one another. The line of Lindholm, Toffoli, and Huberto is the only line where there's really no familiarity with anybody uh, in, in terms of planning a line together. Because Toffoli did not spend any time or like next to no time five on five with Lindholm last year after the trade. Obviously, Huberto's new. So th- these guys have never played with one another. And I just think with Huberto being one of, if not the league's best passer or best distributor, and then having your two best snipers or your two best finishers on the team, especially from distance in Toffoli and and Lindholm, I just think there's so much reason to keep those guys together and to give them some real time to work through some of the growing pains or work through the learning curve or whatever term you want to use. And I understand it has not been great. I think Huberto has been forcing it at times. He looks like he's really trying to get things done and he looks like he's trying to make an impact. And, and I get that. I applaud it because I think you would much rather have a guy like Huberto caring so much and wanting to make an impact so bad that he's forcing things a little bit. I think you'd much rather have that than the alternative. And I think that's exactly what's happening with Jonathan right now. And I think he's going to figure it out. And and they've got an eight-game homestand starting on Tuesday to figure that out and, and to start figuring that out. So I, I'm, I'm still feeling quite um, bullish about that line and optimistic about that line. I really am. But yes, to, to Peter's point, that is a line that I think needs to pick it up a little bit, or or is pick it up's the wrong term. That is a line that that you're looking to see improvement from as we move into the latter stages of the early part of the season, if that makes any sense. Um, Marcus says Vegas is going to be another tough test, no doubt. Um, the Golden Knights are off to a three and zero start. Mark Stones looked good. Jack Eichel's looked good. Their goaltending with Logan Thompson and Aiden Hill has held up just fine. So Vegas looks like they are going to be a very big test. Now, the good news for Calgary is they have had lots of success on home ice against Vegas, just less success on the road in Vegas. Well, this game's at home starts off an eight-game homestand on Tuesday. Uh, Tom says, Mike Stone just needs to stay in the top six. What a pro. Josh says, how about Stone's bomb from the blue line? My God. Um... I don't know what more you can say about Michael Stone at this point. Three points last night or Saturday night, uh, a goal and two assists, his first ever three-point game. All three of those points came in the first 741 of the first period for his career night. The guy's just a consummate pro. He goes out there. He does his job. He does exactly what's asked. He plays a reliable third-pairing role. That that pair with him and Zadorov has been generally Fairly effective, not spectacular in terms of what they're doing in that respect. But then the offense is coming. He, We've always known Michael Stone possesses an absolute clapper of a shot. But he doesn't or hasn't always used it with a lot of regularity. Well, I think that blood clot, when he missed all that time a couple of seasons ago, pre-pandemic, and then the experience of sitting out during the pandemic season for a good chunk of that year and sitting out a lot of last year as the Flames really gelled with their 60. I think that that allowed Michael to kind of enter an evolution in terms of what he is as a hockey player. He has worked extensively with Daniel Fajita, the Flames' outstanding skating coach. DF has been working with Michael since the blood clot because when Michael had that blood clot, all he could do was skate on his own for so long because he couldn't take contact because he couldn't risk getting cut and then not having the bleeding stop because he was on the blood thinners. So while that was going on, he could still exercise. He just couldn't do it in an environment with contact. So it was him... And Danielle and they went through it daily and his skating improved immensely. He'll talk about it. Danielle will talk about it. And then I also think during that time and over those couple of years, he really kind of started to, to analyze some of the things that he can do better as a defenseman in this league and using one of his most valuable assets 
of that shot and using it more, I think, is absolutely part of that conversation. Rob says, Manj and Dubé so far seem like two Badgers on the ice. I love it, and they've been a great fit with Kadri. That line felt like it was going to be a great fit, but it has been a great fit to this point. Dylan says, bottom six, the only concerning problem for me right now, Lewis, Rooney, and Lucic are just offensive duds. But, I mean, I, I don't know what you're exactly looking for, Dylan, in, in the bottom six. I mean, Backlund's, Backlund and Coleman have been really good. Lewis is kind of there as a riding shotgun guy in more of a defensive role, which he plays well. You're not going to get a ton of offense at this point from Lucic. I think Rooney's got some that can still be harnessed a little bit, but I, I don't think you're expecting a ton of offense from your bottom six right now. And, and I mean, they have. I mean, Rooney assisted on the stone goal. Um, Richie scored the first goal of the season. Our, our Brett Richie standing continues on Flames Nation Live, and, and he, he scores the – so I – I don't think it's that much of a concern. I still believe to that point, Dylan, I still believe that they are a middle six forward short of an ideal lineup. But ideal lineup on October 16th isn't 100% needed. I think it's something you can let evolve as you move through the first couple of months of the season. Uh, Caden says it's going to be hard to pull Stone out of the lineup at the level he's playing uh, when Shillington makes a return. You know, and this is this is not to trivialize what is going on with Oliver, but at all, because as as we've talked about, all we want is Oliver to be okay and and the the privacy and the time. Just let him work through what he's going through right now. But when Oliver comes back, I don't know when that's going to be. I still don't think we're talking about imminently. And when he does come back, he's going to need some time to get up to speed because he'll be joining a team that has NHLers in full swing and he hasn't even had a training camp. So it's going to take some time in that regard. And you have no idea what the blue line situation, the injury situation is going to look like when he returns. So I get the premise and I, I think that you're bang on, Caden. I just, I just think you got to wait to see what things look like, what the circumstances are when Shillington, A, is ready to rejoin the team, and B, when he's back up to speed and ready to rejoin the lineup and be playing games. Uh, Kevin says, Dubé looks so much faster and bigger this year. He has definitely gotten stronger. He was number one in fitness testing again, and I know how hard that guy worked during the offseason. He worked his ass off, and so he, yeah, he's he's been really, really, Really impressive so far. Zach says this roster's constructed a hell of a lot better to operate more efficiently under Sutter this year. How impressed were you with Lucic, Rooney, Richie the first two games? These guys never get enough credit. I thought that line was really good in both games, but what jumped off the page to me most was what that Richie line with Rooney and Lucic did in the third period against Edmonton. Did not matter who they were out against. Look, Richie... If you have watched Flames Nation live before or listened to Flames talk before or read my columns at flamesnation.ca, you know how I feel about Brett Ritchie. He got way too much flack last year and he got way too much criticism. He was the whipping boy and I don't understand why because all the guy did was go out there and be effective in his role. Now, Pinder over at Barnburner would say, and, and, and he's right, I think part of it is the PTSD that goes along with when we saw Richie on the, the Gaudreau Monahan line going back to the, the 56 game season. I think that's part of why Richie was a guy that, that took a lot of criticism, but properly slotted in his role as a fourth line right winger. I think he's great. I really do. I think he fits perfectly, and I don't think you take him out of the lineup at this point. We stand. We stand for Brett Ritchie. That's, that is one of the themes of this show. Um, what else we got here on the live chat? It's Flames Nation Live with Steinberg. Hopefully you're doing well. Uh, J-Dub says, I used to watch that stone slap shot with the Hitman. Yes, and he used it a lot. Um, Zach with the question about Shillington. And again, I just think you need to wait to see where things are, what things look like when Oliver, um, when Oliver returns. Um, this from Will, to be honest, I'm worried more about Toffoli being on the top line. He's not a great fit, in my opinion. Well, here's what I would push back on that with, Will. He's been really dangerous so far. That line has not been great, and yet Toffoli has scored a goal, and he has 
had numerous opportunities so far. I mean, he had two great scoring opportunities in the first three shifts on Thursday night. He had a couple of good scoring opportunities against Edmonton on Saturday. So I actually think what we're seeing from Toffoli on a line that is clearly still finding its legs is, is pretty positive and something that I think again, deserve some time to play out and see how it plays out. Um, we'll see, though. We'll see. Uh, this says, Backlund, Coleman, Richie playing well from Diller, Dylan. Just feel Lewis on the line with Backlund and Coleman feels out of place. Rizicko or Richie would be better on that line than Lewis. Well, let's see how it plays out. Um, I do, I think that Lewis was there because I think that they were trying to use him as a defensive specialist on that line, knowing the type of personnel they were going to be playing against. And and Lewis still does some really good things defensively. Uh, so I think that's why Dylan Lewis has been on that line. I don't necessarily see that being as a permanent fit, but uh, we shall wait and see. Um, what else we got here on the live chat? Busy um, on the live chat today, which is outstanding. Uh, J-Dub asks, is Adam Rizicka the Flames extra forward for now? Yes, extra forward is Rizicka. Extra defenseman is Mackie so far. Um, that's what we're talking about from, from a lineup perspective. They're only carrying one extra player on either side. They're not carrying uh, They're not carrying two forwards or two. Like They're carrying 13 and 7 along with the two goalies. Gives them a little bit of cap benefit. And the head coach doesn't really like a whole lot of extra players around. Um, this one from Zach says, Thoughts on Uyghurs' first two games? Good, average, or needs improvement? For me, good with improvement clearly going to come. I think there's a couple of things with Uyghur. First of all, I think he's still learning what this group's all about and what playing for Daryl Sutter entails and all that type of stuff. So I think he's still adjusting. And I also think, and, and I think Uyghur's adjusting to, you know, the responsibilities that are so paramount away from the puck in Daryl Sutter's brand of hockey. The other thing is, I also think that we're talking about Chris Tanev adjusting to having Uyghur on his pairing because Tanev hasn't played with a lot of right shots before. You know, in his tenure with Calgary, he's played exclusively with left shots, whether it's Shillington or Hannafin or Giordano. So, yeah, I think that he's getting used to playing with a right shot guy on his left side, and I think that takes a little bit of time and a little bit of getting used to. So, I think Uyghur's been good. I think there's still some adjustment going on, and I think that the sky's the limit. Here's what, the one thing that I do know, and I'm very confident in when it comes to Uyghur. I think this guy is going to turn into an absolute fan favorite on this team. The way he plays is infectious. He never quits. Um... The motor's always running. The skating's there. There's just a really infectious quality about the way he plays the game. And I think that he's going to be one of the fan favorites on this team as a result. Very similar to the way Mark Giordano played the game. And we all know how much fans appreciated what Gio did um, as a member of this team. Uh, a couple more on the live chat. Jason says, uh, sorry, J-Dub says, I'm glad Anderson's okay after that hit from behind. Still don't get how he got the, the penalty out of it. Um, yeah, he uh, he popped right up. Uh, and, and I know that he had to leave for a little bit, but that was really, really good that Anderson was okay. That was not a good hit, and I'm glad he's okay. And Rasmus has been really good to start the season, too. Uh, Pete says, let's not forget the caliber of the first two teams Calgary's played against. Stiff competition. And as I said, Vegas, just as stiff coming up. Uh, This says, Huberto passes so well, it throws his teammates off. You love to see it. And I do think that is one thing that is going to take a little bit of getting used to is just how accurate and in, like, from nowhere – Jonathan Huberto's passing is like he makes something out of nothing more so than any player I can remember. And that's including Johnny that, that I can remember for the flames. He does so many things that 99.9% of the league can't do with the puck on his stick when it comes to finding others. Um, you know, you, you hear Daryl talk about how he likes to, he's, he's not looking for players or jerseys. He likes to find sticks. Um, Kirk Muller on our flames talk post game show during the, preseason the associate coach compared him to Dale, Dale Howard Chuck the way that he thinks the game so he's just always one or two steps ahead or thoughts ahead when it comes to distributing that puck and it's pretty cool to watch and I think it's going to take a little time for guys like Lindholm and guys like uh 
to Foley to get used to it because it's so next level. Uh, wrapping things up on this edition of Flames Nation Live, brought to you by DoorDash. One more time, use the promo code FNLiveDD uh, after you have created the uh, account and downloaded the app. Then use that promo code, get the 25% off your first order and free delivery. Great stuff on the live chat. Thanks for being along with us on this Sunday. Flames play Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday of next week, starting with a fun one, Tuesday, 7 o'clock, against the Vegas Golden Knights on Sportsnet 960 The Fan. I'm Pat from Flames Talk on Sportsnet 960. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll talk to you later this week on Flames Nation Live. Stay well. Be kind to one another. Talk to you soon. It's been Flames Nation Live, brought to you by DoorDash.